I was nine years old, my father took me to see The Sound of Music starring Julie Andrews. <laughs> I was heavily influenced by the epic nature and sense of camaraderie I witnessed upon the screen. It was almost as good as The Wizard of Oz, which I never missed each year when it was shown on TV. I couldn't let another year go by without putting on my own theatrical extravaganza. <laughs> I longed to taste stardom. Much to my luck, the school talent show was in the process of being cast. Late one day after school, I walked up to that time-slotted sheet and signed on as opening act. I thought I, if any, could fulfill the challenge. <laughs> the script would be a combination of all my favorite stories. I would star as the heroine, Dorothy Vaughn Andrew. <laughs> Our teacher, Miss Horton, was to direct. There won't be any rehearsals, she informed us. I'm trusting each of you to work up your parts on your own. We'll put the show together on opening night. We'll perform it in the style of an ancient pageant. <laughs> Miss Horton was a horror story unto herself. She predated the Acropolis, wore Chinese silk dresses, great amounts of powder, and cheap perfume. The evening of the performance, I left home on a speeding bicycle. I carried a suitcase full of costumes and props. I used a safety patrol office, one of my favorite spots, as a changing room. I cannot begin to describe the thrill that tingled through my body as the curtain went up on my scene. I was stretched out on an imitation chaise long, <laughs> looking not unlike Cleopatra. <laughs> I had on a red dress, belted at the waist, and patent leather high-heeled shoes. <laughs> my hair was a simple terry cloth bath towel pulled back into a fashionable ponytail. <laughs> Above my eyes, I had drawn thick, black, angular bars. <laughs> I wore my mother's heirloom pearls and held a champagne glass thrust grandly into the air. Here <clears throat> I could get out my first line of there's no place like home. <laughs> a great and hideous wall of laughter engulfed in the <laughs> said a swift prayer of thanks that my parents were out of town on business. <clears throat> I didn't lose all hope of recapturing the drama until I looked off into the wings and saw Miss Horton laughing hardest of all. <laughs> I felt so nauseous, the only thing I could think to do was run to the boys' washroom. But Miss Horton stopped me. She said, get back out there! You are hysterical! Finish your scene! <laughs> I tried to warn her of my illness, but she wouldn't listen. Not until I vomited all over the front of her elegant gown. <laughs> A few days later, she phoned my mother to see if she's prepared to pay the expensive dry cleaning bill. She must have told her the whole story because after they hung up, Mother Dear came into my room. I was in bed, reading a book on baseball as penance. <laughs> she was confused and angry and sent through clenched teeth, tell me you're not a homosexual. <laughs> For God's sake, tell me you're not. Of course not, I snapped. I knew I couldn't tell her the truth. Though I was only nine, had the right man come along, I would have gladly given him my hand in marriage. <laughs> <laughs> Tension grew at school. Fighting was a big sport, and there wasn't a boy who didn't challenge me. I always refused, knowing I hadn't the proper training to win. <laughs> Soon, a polite decline was not enough. I began finding an ever-growing gang of them waiting for me by my bicycle after school. It was only by use of clever talk that I managed to undo my lock and race away. Finally. It was arranged with Miss Horton that I leave five minutes prior to the bell in order to get a safe head start. <laughs> I was soon a complete prisoner to my pacifistic nature. Mother suggested cattily that I engage in a boxing class at the Y, an idea I dismissed immediately. Head, you better learn how to defend yourself like a man? No. Then don't think you can come crying to me. I wouldn't dream of it. I ran away. I didn't get far. 
Just two blocks. <laughs> when I went back up the steps that led to our house, I swore never to waste my talents on an ungrateful audience again. <laughs> I realized, for the time being, my career as a child star would have to play second string to my surviving grade school. I longed for the day I would leave Little Rock, for the much warmer and more welcoming world of strangers. 